The newest college basketball coach that has seemingly taken over the sport is Texas Tech's Chris Beard. His teams at Texas Tech have been extremely good. I mean, the past two NCAA tournaments they've made, they've lost to the eventual champion. Chris Beard and Texas Tech have been a blast to watch on the defensive end, and today I wanted to talk about his coaching career and what he's accomplished so far. But before I get into talking about Chris Beard, I would greatly appreciate it if you guys took the time to hit that little red subscribe button down below. It would help me out a lot, but without further ado, let's talk about Chris Beard. Chris Beard is is the same guy he has always been. He's one of my favorite coaches in college basketball. Now what makes a dude who is in love with Whataburger, has two paintings of Tupac and Biggie in his office, from Cliff Kingsbury, so interesting. Well, first thing is that he hasn't changed much since he began his coaching career, and is like the same guy from when he first started. It began as a manager at Texas for the Texas Longhorns, he was a grad assistant then at Incarnate Word and Abilene Christian, and then he was an assistant coach at North Texas, coached a community college in Fort Scott Community College, and went JUCO and coached Seminole State College. So obviously Chris Beard grinded his way to get where he is today. And this is somebody that was really dedicated to becoming a Division I basketball coach. And he got his big chance to become an assistant coach at Texas Tech under the legend Bob Knight in 2001 and became his associate head coach and was there until 2011 and coached with Bob's son, Pat. But the grind continued after Tech because in 2011, Beard was then the head coach in the American Basketball Association for a season and coached the South Carolina Warriors. Then in 2012, McMurray University in Texas hired Beard, and finally in 2013, Angelo State in Texas came calling, and Beard spent two years there. But finally, he became a Division I head coach in 2015 at Arkansas Little Rock, and was named the head coach there on April 8th of 2015. This just proves how big of a grind it is to become a Division I basketball head coach. I mean, even if you coached with Bob Knight, the legend himself, and was his associate head coach. I mean, it is not an easy path to get where Chris Beard got, and you know, he made the most of it. Now this one season at Little Rock was a magical one, and I vividly remember watching this team play multiple times that year. Little Rock was not good before Beard got there, and haven't been good since he left, but that 2016 team went 30-5, and five, won the regular season and the Sun Belt Tournament. They were a 12 seed in the tournament and beat Purdue in double overtime, and that was an incredible game, but they lost to Iowa State in the round of 32. But this was good enough to get Beard promoted, and he left Little Rock to become the next head coach at UNLV in March of 2016, but Beard did not last long there because Tubby Smith had taken the Memphis job and was leaving Texas Tech and they wanted Chris Beard and Chris Beard wanted them. People forget that he was barely approved at UNLV to become their head coach and he wanted to live closer to his daughters in Lubbock and Chris Beard returned home after a month on the job at UNLV and now he was the head coach at Texas Tech. At Texas Tech, they have not lacked in the success department since the 2017 season. Even 2017, they started out 11-1 in his first season, but they only went 18 and 14 to finish the season. So things didn't go like they had planned, but after that year, things have been great there. 2018, they were one of the best teams on defense. They went all the way to the Elite Eight before losing to the eventual champion in Villanova. And 2019 was even better. The Red Raiders had the best defense in the nation, besides Virginia, and finished with a 31 and seven record on the entire season and made it all the way to the national championship game before losing in overtime to Virginia. And Chris Beard would go on to win AP Coach of the Year. Now they did lose a lot of their talent from the 2019 team. In the 2020 season, Tech went 18 and 13, but their defense was what carried them this year. And they had been able to play with the top teams in the sport competitively, led by freshmen and sophomores Jemias Ramsey and Kyler Edwards. Now the season got cancelled, so we never really know what could have happened in March if they made it, but honestly I think that's why Chris Beard is the next big name in the sport, but honestly he really already is. Chris Beard's teams lock it up on the defensive end of the floor. They were a top 10 defensive team in college basketball the past three seasons on Ken Palm. The 2019 Texas Tech team was one of the best defensive teams in the Ken Palm era, holding teams under 0.85 points per game. They contest every shot, they protect the middle of the court and allow you to take shots, but they won't allow you to get it back and every single shot you take is contested. They adjust to whatever style of offense you play. And they have done it the past two NCAA tournaments, getting to the Elite Eight and the National Championship game, and both times they lost to the eventual champion. I mean, Texas Tech gets the most out of their players too. Having Jarrett Culliver get drafted in the top five, Zaire Smith was drafted right outside the lottery, and Jemais Ramsey is on his way to the league. They developed their players at Texas Tech. I mean, they took both Culliver and Smith, who wore three-star recruits, and made them into draft picks and basically both lottery picks. And that is a big reason why players want to be there. In this past offseason, Tech was able to get two of the best transfers on the market and VCU's best player Marcus Santos Silva and Georgetown point guard Mac McClung. They were also in the running for top recruits going forward, despite the appeal of the G League. So players are talking and Tech seems to be one of the best options to advance your basketball career. Now everybody always asks this question when it comes to Chris Beard, especially as of lately. 
I mean, what's gonna happen? Is he ever gonna leave Texas Tech? A lot of people seem to say Texas is the big name for him. He loves living in the state, he loves Whataburger, and you know, he was a student manager there. However, I honestly think that Texas Tech has better fan support, they have better facilities, a better arena, so why would you pack all of that up and then leave for somewhere else? Not to mention that their AD paid Chris Beard the bag and made him the fifth highest paid head coach in college basketball behind Rick Barnes at Tennessee, Mick Cronin at UCLA, Coach K, and Coach Cal. Not even just the money, United Supermarkets Arena is one of the best arenas in college basketball. And Tech fans are great and have been one of the best up and coming fan bases in college basketball. They also received a $10 million donation and built a new basketball facility that is state of the art and right next to the arena. So Chris Beard has absolutely everything he needs there. Not to mention that he has one of the best assistants in the sport in Mark Adams as his right hand man. Basically the only thing in my opinion that could get Chris Beard out of Texas Tech would be the NBA. Basically maybe the Spurs, the Mavericks, the Rockets are the three teams that I could possibly see Chris Beard leaving for just because they're in state. But even then again, I think Chris Beard is just a college basketball coach, so I highly doubt he ever even leaves Texas Tech. I mean the guy is a Bob Knight disciple. I mean this guy is college basketball or bust, so I just don't see him leaving. He has coached professional basketball before, but I think he's the type of guy that would be in college basketball for a very long time. Chris Beard is a college basketball coach after all, and I think Texas Tech fans are extremely lucky to have him. It was a match made in heaven, and it was always meant to be.